remember, we are created spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Our inheritance from Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 4, is the Torah. The Torah is our inheritance. Moses commanded us a law, Torah, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. That is our inheritance, physical inheritance, for the congregation of Jacob. Don't think that is just for the Jews. Luke 1.33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom shall be no end. Speaking of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Now we have that, that we also have in, in Romans uh, 8, 17. I can read from verse 14. We're in Romans 8, 14. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, that they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with, together with him. So we have the law, the Torah, as our inheritance. But we also have Jesus Christ as our inheritance. So, as I was speaking on Friday, we had <clears throat> pre-crucifixion and resurrection, and we have post-crucifixion and resurrection. Before the crucifixion and resurrection, the Father spoke to Abraham directly, uh, Moses directly. <clears throat> when Jesus spoke to, to, he asked Peter, who do you say I am? And he says, you are the son of man. And he says, that did not come from man. That came from your heavenly father. See, Jesus was still, had not been crucified or resurrected. So that's confirmation. But after the, the crucifixion and resurrection, okay, we have that through the Holy Spirit communication. We have spirit, soul, and body. So when the Lord was resurrected, and when he was crucified, we were also crucified with him. As I say many times, you may think I'm repeating the scripture. I want you to get it that I'm reinforcing it inside of you. Reinforcing the scripture. <clears throat> when Jesus spoke, uh, let me read that, Matthew 16. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 14. And they said, coming from Caesarea, and they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are those, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So that's confirmation of the Father speaking to Abraham, the Father speaking to Moses, and speaking through the prophets. In Romans chapter, uh, let's go to chapter, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Our flesh was also crucified with Jesus Christ. Our flesh was also crucified with Jesus Christ. Galatians 5.16 this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Now you can see that the soul and the body, they work together. So the spirit is, is fighting, it's going to be fighting against the soul and the flesh. And the soul is fighting the spirit man. The spirit man. In the book of Genesis, 
when he said, when the Lord said to Adam and Eve, if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. Now what died, or lies dormant in each person, is the spirit man. Now the spirit man lies dormant until people on this earth receive Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ resurrected, and we ask Jesus Christ into our life, that means our spirit man becomes resurrected. Now, the world's not going to agree with it, because the world thinks our soul is our spirit. Even the people in the church have confused this, as I was saying the other day, that our soul is our spirit. They say they're very spiritual. Now, this may be going against a lot of different religions or even Christianity, okay? But your spirit man, okay, isn't brought alive, isn't resurrected until you bring Jesus Christ into your life. You're working out of your soul. Let me read Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, verse 2. How shall we that are dead to sin live, live any longer therein? If we're dead to sin, if our flesh was crucified on the cross, then why continue to live in sin? Verse 3. Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. So, if we died in Christ and he lives in us, then we are to live and our spirit man is resurrected just as he res was resurrected. That's post-crucifixion and resurrection. You didn't have to accept Jesus Christ before in the manner that we do now because the crucifixion and resurrection had not happened. But now, that's what we do, because he died on the cross for us, and we recognize that. But do you recognize that? People don't understand living in the soul versus living in the spirit. You have to die to the flesh. Luke 9, 23, deny yourself. You'll know when you're denying yourself only when you're in the spirit. <clears throat> Let's look at John. Let me read this again. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, to them that believe on his name, verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And those are the sons of God. You're still in the natural, but you've accepted the resurrection of Jesus Christ into your life. You've accepted the crucifixion of Jesus Christ in your life. Not that Jesus Christ was the only one that was crucified, and he was the only one that resurrected. We also died our flesh was crucified in him and with him. And our spirit man, okay, which was dormant before, rose up. And that's how we, he bears witness with us. In Romans 8.16, he bears witness with our spirit. He does not bear witness with our soul. So, going back to Isaiah 64.6, but we are all as unclean and all our righteousness as filthy rags. So, what does that mean? That means if you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your life 
and your spirit and your flesh isn't dead, and your spirit man is no longer dormant, but it's resurrected, yes, one of the biggest lies I said the other day is, oh, you're a good person. Oh, you're a good person. You do good things. You do righteous deeds. Okay, well, if your spirit man has not been resurrected through the acceptance of Jesus Christ, okay, everything is emanating out of your soul, even good works. So whatever unrighteous things you've done, or even righteous things you've done, they are all self-righteous, and self-righteousness. And it's emanating from your flesh. Hence, they're like filthy rags. Because unless you okay, have activated the Spirit of God by receiving Jesus Christ, as we just read in Romans chapter 6, let me read it again. Verse 4, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even we, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So we are resurrected. Our spirit man is no longer dormant. As he said in Genesis, you shall surely die. The spirit man died. But now when you receive him, accept him on the cross, not just him, but we also with him, and that we are resurrected, our spirit man, say this to yourself if you don't get it, meditate on this constantly. My spirit man has been resurrected. My flesh has been crucified. Because remember in Romans 6, 1, he says, how shall we live, no, I'm sorry, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in it? People that first come to Christ, uh, you sort of expect them to continue sinning because they haven't learned yet. Okay, they're babes in Christ. <clears throat> As Paul the Apostle says in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto though you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal, for wherein there is among you envy and strife and division, and you are not carnal and walk as men. That's a question mark. You're supposed to be risen with Jesus Christ. Now, even Paul, I believe it's in the book of Galatians. Uh, let's go there. If you go to Galatians chapter 1, uh, verse 16, to reveal his son in me, this is Paul the Apostle, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I confirmed, not with the flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. The even Paul, had to go and grow in Christ. He knew how to live it. He knew the Torah in the soul. He knew the Torah in here through knowledge, but he didn't, and he had not accepted Jesus Christ yet for his spirit man to learn and to accept how to live and to be resurrected through the spirit man here and bear witness with Jesus Christ until he had that Damascus experience, that road to Damascus experience with Jesus Christ. Then he accepted Jesus Christ. And when he accepted Jesus Christ, he also accepted this crucifixion of flesh and the resurrection of the spirit man. Because before that, he was only going through knowledge. He was only going through knowledge. But he was in that time of Jesus Christ. But he had not accepted Jesus Christ. He was still crucifying and stoning believers in Christ after the crucifixion and after the resurrection. That was the problem. If it was still before Jesus Christ, God the Father would have been speaking to him. But God the Father, that ceased because we had the resurrection and the crucifixion. So that's what Paul now went away three years. And that's a good litmus test. That's a good uh, 
when you come to Christ, it should take about three years to start maturing, to become a mature Christian, and then continue to grow. One of the biggest problems I see is people get sick, accept Jesus Christ on Wednesday, and they're handing out tracts two days later trying to minister to people, and they're not strong enough to take on the wiles of the enemy. You have to go from, from, from milk to solid food, okay, to, to steak, so to speak. But people try to go out and be mature Christians when they can't. You can't rush that. So I'm speaking to you as a mature Christian. If you're not a mature Christian, understand now that you need to grow. How do you grow? By dying to the flesh. Only by dying to the flesh and denying yourself will you grow in the spirit. Some of you are going to say, but I'm a good person. Who cares? Remember Isaiah 64, 6. Any righteousness that you do, that you're not dead to the flesh in, it's only emanating from your soul, not from your spirit. And that's, that is, I would say a curse right now that's emanating through the church. They confuse what's happening in their soul as the spirit of God. You have a lot of babes in Christ, okay, that do the works of the flesh, to the natural person, oh, they're living a righteous life. And that's great from what they're doing. But it's only emanating from their soul. Proverbs 10, 19. I'm going to read it in a couple translations. I think I read it the other day, but let me read it again. Uh, this is the King James first, and then I'm going to read it in the New King James. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. A little confusing. New King James is this. In the multitudes of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. In the New Living Translation, too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. People that do a lot of good things, you always hear them boasting about it. You always hear them boasting about it. We're not too far away from Skid Row in Los Angeles. I mean, there's tons of ministries out there feeding the homeless. And that's great to feed the homeless. But if they're not dying to the flesh themselves, are they doing it from the Spirit of God? Or are they just doing it from their soulish works? Their soulish works. And if their soulless works are the only thing that are growing, their spirit man will not grow. Their spirit man will not grow. And this is an individual choice. I know some Churches have gone under fire because some of their uh, congregations, oh, they're too strict. I mean, I definitely get that here. Pastor Mike's too strict. Pastor Mike's too strict. Pastor Mike's too strict. Well, I'm strict because I want you to grow in the spirit. I don't want you to get close to me. Do not even think about getting close to me. Get close to Jesus Christ. And the only way you're going to get close to Jesus Christ, okay, is to hear his voice. And that's to be quiet. It, it, it's sad and it drives me nuts at the same time when people try to explain to me how close they are to Christ. And what they do for Christ. I don't really need to hear that. The only one that does need to hear that is Christ. And the only way you could do that is through silence and dying to the flesh. Be crucified and watch Christ live in you. And John 1, 40, and the word became flesh. To be Christ-like, to be the newness again, to be born again. You're crucified on the, on the cross with him. Understand that. We'll continue.
continue this next week.